that's where the piano comes in. Peter, I love it. Love is theme. Love is theme. What have you done? <laughs> I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. Jane Halifax. You can tell them everything's all right now. I won't hurt anyone again. How can you be sure of that, Mr. Kavax? Because Jesus won't be speaking to me anymore. I did what he told me to do. About 40 stab wounds through both her breasts because Jesus told him to go out and destroy some lovely young girl. Freaking animal. If you want me to certify him, I'll certify him. Well, you're taking this nice and cool, calm clinical approach. He should be put down. Mick, if you want my opinion, whoever let this one out must have lost the plot. Lost the plot? Who are you talking about? Now, fair go. Got a quote for me, Mick? Tom, she thought you were one of us. News Telegraph. Dr Halifax, isn't it? <laughs> are you serious? Quote me. You were saying somebody stuffed up. Was it one of your shrink mates? It was an off-the-record remark. A private comment, obviously. Yeah, but uh, this isn't a private place. The young girl's dead. Kovacs is in hell and you're putting someone's reputation on the line. I'll only quote what I heard. Quote this, you're a mindless prick. Look, can we talk about this? Doctor, if that was a diagnosis, send me the bill. This morning's news stories, one of Melbourne's leading psychiatrists slams the release of James Raymond Kovacs, the former mental patient questioned in the early hours of this morning over the murder of a 21-year-old nursing sister. In an angry outburst, oh. forensic psychiatrist Dr Jane Halifax called into question the judgment of those who let the killer loose to kill again. The judicial... Hey guys, I'm just going to have a quick look at Dr Halifax! I'm from Sydney tonight. Uh, look, I'd rather not do this. Uh, have you anything more to say about the release of dangerous patients? No. Was James Raymond Kovac dangerous when he was released? I was called in to assess his condition only after he was arrested. And what's your opinion of the doctor who did the original assessment? Do you still think he lost the plot in Kovac's case? No comment. Do you recall not so long ago a controversy about one of your own recommendations for release? Kill threatening the privacy of a patient. 
guess it means no comments. Oh, it's really hit the fan, hasn't it? They're going after me now, digging up the Peter Dalton case. Dr. Halifax's rooms. Yes, Dr. Bartlett, she's here. Just a moment. Yes, Robert. I'm sorry? When I assessed James Kovacs, he was ready for release. I respect your judgment. He was bright, missed nothing, noticed everything. He even wrote to me asking for clarification of some points. I realize he was still learning to deal with his rage. But what's unusual about that? So am I. Robert, I'm really sorry. Are you infallible? None of us are. Do you think Peter Donaldson could turn out to be another Kovac? You sound almost hopeful. Damn sweet irony, I'd call it. Sweet irony? He's built another life for himself. It's about to be blown apart. Right work done today, mate. David, there's somebody I have to see. Not on my time. Not if you want to keep this job. Look, I don't know if it's true or not, but the media is not judge and jury. Peter Donaldson. Did you kill that girl? That was six years ago. I'm not the same person. Did you? Yes. Laura. Laura. Don't be afraid of me. You killed someone. Have a seat. Oh, isn't it better if I wait outside? Uh, are you comfortable with that? It's entirely up to you. Yeah. You ask Dr. Halifax anything you want to know. She knows me better than anyone else. You can trust her. She's the one who had me released. Thanks, Pete. Give us a little time. Most people would have deserted me yesterday. 
Governor. No, she can't come to phone. Because she's with a patient. Look, the best I can do is take your number. He's afraid of losing you. You met through his music, didn't you? The students tried out one of his short pieces and afterwards he... We... Um... Would you like a cup of coffee? No. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, White. George, we'll get two coffees, one white. Oh, sure. Um, that current affairs mob have been on the phone again. About six months ago when you and Peter met, wasn't it? At the conservatorium. What instrument do you play? Violin. Peter killed someone he loved. He was 17 years old. So was she. He spent five years in an institution. It wasn't a prison sentence. He was there for treatment. Why did he do it? Lauren, the young man you met, the man you've fallen in love with, is real. When Peter was younger, he was a shadow person. Ah, oh, I don't understand. He had no solid ground to stand on. No love. He grew up without a mother. But so do lots of people. His father demanded a lot from him. Peter's creative, but not academically brilliant. He couldn't cope. Couldn't compete. He started taking drugs. And after that, his father cut off all contact with him. Because of the drugs? And his behaviour. It's much easier to destroy a child's relationship than to accept responsibility. The personality disorder Peter suffered from was heightened by drug abuse. He began having paranoid delusions. Now that simply means he imagined, and I stress imagined, that the person he loved would hurt him in some dreadful way if he didn't prevent it. You mean by hurting her? It was terrible for Peter too. He was tormented beyond anything we can imagine. But he loved her. And he killed her. And he loves me. He was ill. Now he's well. Are you sure of that, Dr. Halifax? I believe so. What? What? I need some time. All right. All right, that's all right.
You entered the flat. Oh, Dad. Oh, Dad. <laughs> Same old place. It's handy. You need some company, though, love. I've got a new flatmate, another student. Dad, don't. You expecting a call? If it's him, do you want to talk? No. Yeah, get in. Who is this? No, she isn't. No, she doesn't want to do an interview. What are you talking about? Who says she knows him? We've got nothing to say to you people. Listen, people... People have got a right to privacy now. Now, don't call again, please. I told you, you can't see Mr. West. How the bloody hell did you get past security? You're pretty good at not taking no for an answer, Judy. Let's see how I learned from you. Dr. Halifax, security told us you were on your way up. Come in. No, Judy, you can stay. This is your story. Please, doctor, sit down. What I have to say won't take long. You targeted me because of the Kovacs case. Well, that's pretty low, but I accept it. Well, sensational stuff. But you are dragging one of my patients into this. The papers have printed his name and photo. Yes, but you're taking it further. Have you any idea the damage you can do? Well, I guess if you kill a young girl, you have to expect it to be talked about from time to time. We're examining an issue, telling a story. Then tell Kovac's story. My newspeople are doing that. We want to widen the debate. Oh, what debate? This is a witch hunt. We're focusing on a legitimate area of public concern. I don't accept that. Peter Donaldson has rights, just like anyone else. Rights? Tell me who I'm responsible to when I go to air each night. The Peter Donaldsons? The Kovacs? No way. When I go to air, I'm talking to my people. Two and a half million of them. Ordinary people who can't understand why these things are allowed to happen you to me. You are going to tell them that any person who spent time in a mental hospital... But for taking a human life... Craig. Look, nobody I... is going to say that Peter Donaldson is going to kill again. We could say you got this one right. This could be a positive story. Oh, it's a love story. But you people, people are hounding you. Peter. You're putting him under unbearable pressure for ratings. That's the truth. Stuff the responsibility. And but... should he be out of hospital if he can't take the pressure? What are you expecting to do if all this gets too much for him? What the hell are you hoping he'll do? Buy a gun and walk into the studio at peak viewing time? Could he be capable of that? How are you feeling now? What about something to eat? No. You have something, Dad. drive home right now if you want to. I know you have to go back soon, Dad. Too many people need you. They always did. When Mum was alive, she used to dish up dinner and you'd say grace, pick up your knife and fork. There'd be a knock at the back door. It's always dark, summer nights. A voice from somebody you'd say, you there, Rev? Come home, love. Exams, I've worked too hard. You're at risk here. When you love someone, you think you know them. But no one knows anyone, do they? Do you love him? I mean, do you really love him? I... Lauren? You home? Lauren? Okay. 
Yeah, um, this is my father. Lauren's talked about you lots. Hi. G'day. Oh, it's awful. It's so awful. Everybody's talking about it. I'll fix you something to eat. It's over now. He'll go away now, I suppose. Need another name. Tell more lies. like him, who takes responsibility? According to one expert we spoke to, absolutely no one at all. Hello? Yes, who's this? You're not happy with the way I do things. You think your patients are being pilloried for ratings. I think there's a city out there that's scared, feels helpless. So come on my show and tell them why they don't have to be afraid to go out at night. Think about it, Doctor. Let me have your answer. Looks like they've targeted you, not me. How are you bearing up? Blondes are worth ten ratings points. Everyone knows that. How's your patient? He'll cope. You're making this for one of your tricks? <laughs> An insomniac's hobby. Devising ways to confound the reason. The design is Easter. Magic belongs to the country of the imagination, Robert. You must show me some time. A paper I read recently suggests that an apology is an act of hostility. Taking that into account, I came here to apologize. You don't owe me an apology. Thanks. Lunch, sir? Yeah. As a child looking down on busy streets, I found it difficult to accept that every person that I could see had uniquely personal feelings as I had. I think that's why I became a psychiatrist. But the mass has a mass mind, and that's something different. It's more cruel, far more dangerous. Craig West calls them his people. And the frightening possibility is that he believes what he tells them. A world of predator and prey, monster and victim. Did I make a mistake with Kovacs, or did I feel threatened? Sometimes we're afraid not to let them out in case they take their revenge on us. And someone else lets them out. Anyway, that's the latest theory. There's a lot of theories nowadays. Defending ourselves against overwhelming odds. Psychiatrists afraid of their patients? Don't let Craig West hear you say that. Aren't you ever afraid, Jane? What if, in the glare of publicity, Peter Donaldson cracks and runs a muck? patient of mine. I'm infallible, you know that. Wine? Please. We should be heart surgeons. Cut here, snip there. Sew it up and kick start. Get it wrong and your patient just dies. We get it wrong. Our patients do worse things. Much, much worse. You were a child once, 
And, and we didn't know which I want to hurt things, break things. It isn't the same, Peter. It wasn't in a confused place. Sunlight and, and darkness, love and hate all mixed up. But you grew up. I didn't. You weren't a child. I was only 17. I got into drugs. I would never do that again now. I spent five years learning to understand what I did and who I am. And I'm still learning it wouldn't happen again. Why didn't you tell me when we first met Dr. Halifax said that you wanted to? Because I was scared. Can't you understand? I was scared. I was afraid of what you think. I am afraid. Afraid you might do the same thing again. Don't do this to me, all right? <laughs> Just believe in me. Don't worry about what other people say. Don't worry about the past. Just believe in me. Peter. I don't think it should be here. I came to talk to Lauren. Now's not the time, son. You're supposed to preach forgiveness. Before we can forgive, we need to understand. That's bullshit! I think you should go, Peter. You love me? Dad? Dad? Morning, love. Where have you been? I'm stuck in your letterbox. Lauren, you have secrets. I want you to know everything, Peter.
Thanks for seeing me, Doctor. I know how busy you must be. Oh, I'm glad I have a chance to talk to you. More troubled souls. You and I cover the same territory in a way. This is what I told you about on the phone. Sending a newspaper cuttings about his past. I mean, surely that's the act of an irrational person. I know I shouldn't condemn the boy, Doctor. My faith tells me that we should forgive those who sin against us. God knows I pity him from the bottom of my soul, but I'm also afraid for my daughter. She might be in grave danger. I understand your concern, but I don't share it. He sneaked into her bedroom last night. She was pretty upset. I asked him to leave. Was that necessary? She's afraid. Confused. I'm confused. The newspapers, the television, they're all saying the same thing, that he shouldn't be out. Sales and ratings are what govern the media's interest. Are you saying that there's no chance that he'll go off the rails like that Kovacs man did? James Kovacs is clearly ill. Peter is not. How can you be sure? If you want a watertight guarantee, I can't give that. I want my daughter to come home with me. Well, that's up to her. By God, Doctor, you're taking a lot on yourself. Can I help you? Yes, I'm looking for Peter. Who wants him? I'm not a reporter, I'm a friend. He's on his lunch break. Shed with the green roof. Thanks. Checking up on me. I want to talk about Lauren. Lauren? What have you seen her again? No. I met her father today. He was upset. He can't understand why you sent those newspaper cuttings. Old cuttings. About Melissa's death. Call her. I have to call her. You thought I... Not if you say you didn't. Well, I didn't, all right. Is that understood? I... Is there anyone who's on my side in this? Anyone who's going to believe me? I believe you. Bitch, flat matter hers hates me. Her father's against me. They're not going to let her answer. I'm sure there'll be an explanation. A couple of drums, a good clean diesel. I'll grab some cold cans. Yep. All right. No problems. Make a call.
Alan Stockwell might be driving down to town. It's not part of my life anymore. Nothing wrong with Alan. And so there was, and what does that mean? Nothing wrong with Alan. Solid. Cares about you. I often thought one day you two might get married. I was just a kid. I didn't know what I wanted. You had a good relationship with Alan. Not like Peter. It's all over. I can't go back to Alan or Wodonga or the way things used to be with us. The damn phone! Why can't they leave you alone? She's not here. Peter, just wait a minute. I'm sorry, son. She's not ready to talk. Sure you won't change your mind? When I was a child, you told me Jesus loved the ones that no one else loves, no matter what they'd done. Do you think it might be possible for you to ask for God's guidance? I don't pray anymore. Then I'll pray for you. In the last few days, I've begun looking forward to retirement. And don't let them drive you out. It's dangerous work we do. When I was seven or eight, I had a recurring dream. A face would come down out of the darkness and almost touch my face. I had to shut my eyes very tight so I couldn't see who it was. I didn't want to see who it was. I've begun having that dream again. What do you think it represents? Robert, I'll read. What is that? Grab a seat. Who is this? Craig West. Yes, I'll be back in a sec. Dr. Halifax? No. You're Dr. Robert Bartlett. That's right. Craig West. Excellent restaurant, isn't it? Good food, wine, pleasant atmosphere. Nice to be able to enjoy life, Doctor. You bastard. I do my work in the public eye. If I'm a bastard, the whole world knows about it. You set yourself up as a messiah. You are part of a disease. I'm just doing my job. Dr. Halifax, you haven't returned my call. I want you on my show. Are you really interested in objectivity? Is that right? Well, if you won't do it, what about Donaldson or his girlfriend, Lauren? We'd make it worth their while. I'll make a deal. I come on your show, you give me a promise not to harass Peter or Lauren. I'll have my producer call you. He'll set things up. See you tonight.
be afraid of me. Someone's trying to drive us apart. They sent the clippings. They wrote the note. I don't know what I believe anymore. Well, can I come in with your father? He had to go back to the parish. Lauren, I feel like I've stopped existing. Let's all just talk. Is Annie here? No, she had to go out somewhere. out for a chorus line. I'll take that to mean low. Oh, thanks, George. How long have I got? Uh, due at the studio in about 20 seconds. Uh -huh. Um, hang on a minute. Which one? Oh, don't give me choices. Call me Craig. Makes people feel good. Stand on the floor. Welcome to City Tonight. I'm Craig West. Tonight, we look into a dark mirror, a mirror which reflects ourselves and our troubled society. We confront the frightening tide of violence and consider the role psychiatry plays in treating this modern play. 23. My first guest, Dr. Jane Halifax. Dr. Halifax, you'd agree psychiatrists make mistakes. Well, the human mind isn't a piece of clockwork. When something goes wrong, finding the reason is a demanding task for any therapist. The mind is a dark place? Well, I wouldn't put it so dramatically. Are we all capable of violence? Define violence. Murderous violence? No. But some of your patients are dangerous One. by any definition? Very few. You know, I sometimes feel that most people needing psychiatric care are too good for this world rather than the opposite. Sudden shocking violence is what concerns us all. How do we prevent these motiveless attacks? Oh, we could do a number of things. Such as? Keep weapons out of the wrong hands. Deplore the culture of violence. Treat violent people rather than just lock them away. Does treatment work? Much better than interning them with other violent people. So you don't believe in punishment, only treatment? For sick people, yes. And after a satisfactory period of treatment, you'd let these people loose again? If I considered them to be ready. But unless you're sure, shouldn't you err on the side of safety? Well, I would have to be sure. Then... Explain how these terrible mistakes happen. Sanity and insanity aren't black and white. Meaning? Insanity can come to many of us. We can also be cured and become ill again. Are you saying that we can never be 100% sure when we're dealing with mental illness? 
Well, the only way to be sure would be to put the entire human race in an institution, Craig. A year ago, you suggested the release of a patient from a high-security psychiatric institution. Are you worried time might prove you wrong in that case? I have no intention of discussing a specific case. But let me ask you, Craig, can shutting away a young person for life be anything but a cruel and inhuman option? That may well be the option my next guest would have preferred. Mr. and Mrs. Dalford, if you'd care to join us. You didn't tell me about this. You haven't met Mr. and Mrs. No, Dalford before? No, I haven't. This is completely unacceptable. Mr. and Mrs. Dalford are prepared to discuss the specific case of their daughter. Mr. Dalford, Melissa's killer spent five years in an institution, correct? Yes. That's correct. Do you think five years is sufficient price Ready to pay for your mother's death? How could it be? Doctor, how could it be? The court sent my patient to the institution for treatment. It wasn't a prison sentence. Not a punishment, and yet he was set free five years later, as many such patients are. My patient was cured. Doctor, you said a moment ago that sanity may not be permanent. Oh, should we lock him up again, just in case? Dr Halifax and a committee were sure that he was ready for release after five years. Are you so sure, Mrs Dalford? We were afraid. Really afraid when he was let out. We're still afraid. With respect, Mrs. Dalford, you aren't qualified. Was the doctor who released James Kovacs qualified? My patient represents many who can overcome their problems. He is a normal young man now with a right to a future. Or another killer who should never have been set free. Our youngest was 11 when her sister was killed. We live in fear of her meeting her first boyfriend. You call Peter Donaldson a normal young man? That's what he seemed to be when he met Melissa. He told her he loved her, he called her his... his lovely girl. But that normal young man killed our child because voices in his head told him to. That is why he was found not guilty on the grounds of insanity. Not guilty? Melissa's dead. Donaldson's still alive. <laughs> No, it's all right. You sure about this, Mr. West? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. If something's bothering you, I'd like to hear about it. Who do you think you are? Craig West. You think you can use people? You think you can put people on television and get them to say what you want them to say? You think you can twist and distort everything? I try to tell the truth. So do my reporters. You spill out people's lives in front of everybody. Whose lives? The Dalefords? They wanted to come on the show. Melissa's life! Mine! We don't mean anything to you, but you take us and you feed us through your cameras and you let people sniff through our lives. You treat people like garbage. That's enough! That's enough! You are scarred in filth! You stink of it! You pig! Take it easy, son. You had to say it. You want me to call the police, Mr. West? No. We're not your property. You don't have the right to do this to us. You don't have the right, you pig! You need help, you Peter. You filthy, stinking pig! You filthy, swine, stinking, filthy pig, swine! We never did anything to you! Worry me to you nothing! You don't have the right to do this, you bastard! What do I have to get him up for you today? Well, no one can blame you for getting angry. It's a perfectly normal emotion. I felt exactly the same last night. Told him he was a crap merchant. No, I wouldn't disagree with that. Lauren matters, not West. You have to remember the trauma she's going through. Give her time. There's something else. Um, I saw a girl who looked like Melissa. You're going to be reminded of Melissa sometimes. You have to accept that. You going to keep your appointment today? I don't think I need to see you anymore. Last night I made some very positive decisions. I think I can work things out by myself now. I'd really like you to keep that appointment.
Peter's jacket was in the living room. Why don't I throw it in the garbage? No, put it in my room. Why? He won't be back for it. You're not going to let him near you again. Put it in my room. You'd better get dressed. There's someone here to see you. Your dad told you I was coming? Can't spare any time now, Alan. I'm going out. Well, I've got some things I can do this morning, so we can get together later. Doing my technique exam. I don't know when I'll be back. I can drive you where you want to go. I don't need a bodyguard. Well, I just thought I'd come down and make sure everything's right and let your dad know. We worry about you. We? Before Daddy became a minister, he had a sheep dog. He whistled, it performed. I'm sorry, Alan. You're a nice guy, but you're out of your depth here. Yeah, well, um, maybe it should set you to death. I've got my exams. Just listen to me. Please, Peter. I can't work this out while everyone's watching this talk. It's going to have to have some time to myself. We've got to go somewhere, somewhere we can be alone. Let me go! You better leave her alone, fella. I'm going away, Lauren. Let her go, mate. Who's this? Friend of Dad's. Uh, Lauren's friend, mate. You're being stupid, Alan. Look, let's walk away. No one's going to have any problems. This has nothing to do with you. Let's walk away. Notice at the boatyard. I'm gonna go away up north, find a beach place. I'm gonna write music. Listen to what I'm saying. Come with me. I can't. I'm late. You were scared, but we could have talked it through if Anne hadn't interrupted. I love you, and I know that you love me. I don't want to be alone. Maybe I don't know anybody else. I assume you're in urgent need of therapy. I know a couple of current affairs hosts who are. Have you heard from Peter Donaldson yet? No, he hasn't confirmed his appointment. Oh, you heard what happened after the show? Yes, I did. You think I was tough on you, on him? Oh, well, let's just say you lived up to my expectations. He was raving. Define raving. Like a madman. Didn't know you had any training in psychiatry, Craig. I want you to know something. I've got patience to see. Listen to me, you smart bitch. When I first met my wife, she was on air five nights a week hosting a quiz show. Mr. An admirer started writing to her at the station. Then he started calling her at the station. He got our unlisted number, started calling us all hours of the night, turned up outside our home one evening. 
After we told the cops, he started following her. He'd track her to some public place, scream obscenities at her. He broke into her house while we were overseas and he daubed shit all over her clothes. Then he got into her house one night when she was home on her own and he raped her. They caught him, put him back in the institution. Now we have a pit bull, bars on the windows, a security firm checks our home every two hours, the garden is floodlit, we sleep with the lights on, and every day she's afraid that someone like you is going to let him out again. Miss Hayward, how are you this morning? Shall we begin with A major, three octaves. Please. You're fighting for your patience, the perpetrators of these terrible crimes. I'm fighting for frightened, innocent people, the victims. You have been hell-bent on making Peter a victim. He killed a 17-year-old girl. He was ill. And one day, when you're attacked, what will you say then? So what's your answer? Hanging? Lock them up forever? If Kovacs had been kept locked up, that nurse would be alive today. A flat minor, three octaves, arpeggio. I'm sorry. Look at this. Then ask yourself, what if you're wrong? Try and look after you. What's going on? Why is Anne moving out? Well, she's scared, Lauren. I'm blind. Here. Here, look at that. It was in a jacket that Peter left here. You should read it. Who opened it? Well, Anne did. You should read it. Nobody has the right. It's addressed to me. Please. I'm going to pack your things. What? Your dad's coming to collect you. Stop trying to take over my life! <sighs> my lovely girl, you don't have to be afraid. The voices try to tell me not to trust you. Did Anne write it? She's jealous of Peter as well. Think, Warren, is it his handwriting? Write that letter. He didn't. I'd know. 
I think you should share it to a shrew. What I want is for you to get out of here. Get out. Going away where? Up north. Well, um, I'm glad you came in to discuss it. I didn't. I just wanted to let you know. I don't need any more sessions. It's a big step. I think I can handle it. Well, it's, it's great that you feel confident. But this is a time of great stress for you. Mm. That's where I'm going. How will Lauren feel about it? Well, I've asked her to come with me. And? She hasn't made up her mind yet. Can you cope if she doesn't? She hasn't said that she won't. Not yet. Uh, I'd be much happier if you had some support. Are you a little anxious about me? Yeah, I am a little. Don't think I'm ready? No, I don't. Well, I'm going to show you. Do you ever think about harming anyone else? No. If I give you the name of a colleague in Brisbane, Will you please make contact with her? It'll all work out, Jane. A new start. Thanks for everything. At 2 a.m., the killer entered the Daleford home where schoolgirl Melissa lay sleeping. A 17-year-old youth, believed to be the dead girl's boyfriend, is helping police with their inquiries. someone, Lauren, or else we're alone. Nobody wants to be alone. And you don't have to be. No. I'm not like you. I'm sorry. Sorry. For me. You. What are you doing? Going. You deserve each other.
boss? I'm going to get something to eat. Mm. Cappuccino? And a bagel? <laughs> Good. How's it looking? Everything here confirms my original diagnosis was proper to release him. Halifax. Craig West. I know we have an agreement, but I think you ought to know that we're putting a flatmate of Lauren's on air tomorrow night. We've received some new information. What sort of information? She thinks he's ill. He's never recovered. Why else would he be sending us strange letters? Define strange. Watch the show.
is suddenly not taking any calls. I'm going over there to sort him out. Dr. Halifax's rooms. Just a minute. It's Peter. Yes, Peter. Um, I, uh, I, I have to see you. Um, now, Doctor. Please, now. I'm here. Now leave the situation you're in and come straight here. Yes. All right. I followed you. I promised your dad I'd look after you. Why don't you try and help me? You scared. in it that I called her my lovely girl. Did you write it? No. No. I, uh, I left my jacket at her place. Um, someone, someone would have put it in there. Who else would know that you'd leave your jacket there? Or that Lauren would find the letter. You don't believe me? <laughs> Think that I'm making this all up? No. I just... I wanted to try and make some sense of this. After I found you... The message light was on. And it was a girl's voice. And, um, she told me to get rid of Lauren. It's okay. It's okay. really there, or it's a command hallucination. Oh, he's sedated. I'll call Dr. Bartlett. He'll be here shortly. Okay.
Georgia, it's Jane. She can't come to the phone. Is Dr. Bartlett there? No. Peter, listen to me carefully. Now, it's important I talk to either Georgia or Dr. Bartlett. But please put one of them on. Peter, are you listening to me? Door, so I had to go downstairs and let Dr. Bartlett in. Give for a moment there, I really do think. Oh, no, he, he, he wouldn't hurt anyone. Did you listen to the tape? Someone got there before me and erased it. I don't understand. Sit down. Thanks, Robert. Anytime. Whoever wiped the message was still there when I arrived. Who? Probably the same person who attacked Lauren. Peter, I think you were meant to find the letter addressed to Lauren. It was just an accident that it reached her. The idea was to destabilise you. To make you think you were losing your mind. Have you ever seen this before? Parents gave it to her. She wore this always. Something wrong? Doctor, do you realize what time it is? She has some questions to ask us. Well, what about? Mrs. Dalford, is this Melissa? Melissa? No, Doctor. This is Melissa. We don't keep photos of Melissa where visitors will see them. It made people feel they had the right to ask questions. Was this Melissa's room? No. <laughs> I know why you think that, but this is Sarah's room. Sarah, where have you been? No, Dr. Halifax. Sarah's our youngest child. It was her photo you saw in the hall. Yes, I was having to talk to her. I have nothing to say to you. 
I think you have. We should talk about Melissa. We've met before, haven't we? No. Isn't this Melissa's turn? I don't understand. Where did you get that? Why don't you tell them, Sarah? Please. It was Melissa's, but Sarah's always worn it since... I'm sorry, Mrs. Delphi, but it may be needed as evidence. I wish I hadn't had to come here. How old were you when Melissa was killed? Eleven? You loved her very much, didn't you? It wasn't me. It wasn't me. The police will arrest Peter. If they do, they won't hold him. Because he isn't guilty. You kept the letters Peter wrote to Melissa, didn't you? What are you saying Sarah's done? And somehow you put one of them into Peter's jacket pocket. He left his jacket in a ute parked outside the bottle shop. He didn't ever want to forget or forgive. No. Sarah, there are people who can help you. I didn't want to hurt her, I just wanted to frighten her. He has no right to be happy. He killed my sister. Why did you let him go? Why? Association with the gunman failed, police marksmen moved in. Are you afraid that one day we'll read about your young lovers? Ah, oh, the human condition, Robert. It's risk and uncertainty. The country of the mind, it's a strange place. Now, when my father first showed me magic tricks, I was convinced they were real. But there were two worlds. One where reality existed. And one a place where fantastic and frightening things happened. (laughs) 
When I began to study and explore and observe the human mind, I found out the two worlds do exist. Am I afraid? <laughs>